This of his personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, an attack on our country. In a tweet moments ago, the president says attorney-client privilege is dead. Let's discuss this and so much more with Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. Good morning, Congressman. Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm well. So do you think that the FBI looking into Michael Cohen's office is an attack on our country? No, I don't know. I, I don't like getting involved, and I, I get that you guys need to in the day-to-day -day of what's going on. I, uh, all I know is the FBI determined that they were going to raid. They probably have a reason for saying that, and I'll find out what that reason is ultimately. I, I don't like getting in and kind of micromanaging this investigation. What I've said from the beginning is Americans want to know the truth, and I think we're going to know the truth on everything when it's over. But that's, therein lies the rub, which is if the president ends it sooner than when it is over, when Robert Mueller determines it's over, do you think that we will be able to get the truth on this? Well, I think that'll be a concern if the president somehow ends the investigation without it coming to fruition. Uh, I don't have any indication that he's going to do that. So I think right now it's an exercise in saying, well, what if, what if? Um, again, I think we'll cross that bridge when we get there. As of now, the Mueller investigation is just going forward. And hopefully at the end of all this, we'll know what's going on. Do you think that it you, is it. helpful right. or harmful to have right. the president weigh in on investigations like this as vociferously as he did yesterday? Well, I don't think it's helpful at all. You know, there's uh, whenever you tweet, uh, there can be trouble, especially when it's uh, a tweet based out of kind of what's going on at the moment. So I wish he didn't. But at the same time, again, I think we'll get ultimate answers when this is done. Um, there's day-to-day play-by-plays. I get that. For me, I just want to say at the end, when we get answers, we'll figure it out from there. Um, I hear you, and I know that, that, that this is not the purview that you want to talk about. But do you – one last question. Do okay. you consider this an attack on our country, what Robert Mueller is doing? No, no. I mean, it's – look, there's justice. Justice needs to be served in whatever capacity, so it's not an attack on our country. Okay, let's talk, move on to um, what you know a lot about, um, sadly, and that is conflict and war. Um, Syria, what do you think the right answer is to do now with Syria? So ever since World War I, we've held that chemical weapons have no place on a battlefield. And it's been a principle we've held very strong as a world, and it's actually done pretty well. For the most part, chemical weapons on a battlefield haven't been used because we've held strong. I think the moment we fail to inflict punishment for the use of chemical weapons, uh, you basically are seeing the end then of the non-proliferation treaty of chemical weapons. And trust me, that would be devastating. I think what the president did a year ago in destroying uh, one-fifth of Assad's Air Force was good. It was right. It basically said any use of chemical weapons, we're going to make the cost way higher. And I think we have to do that again. And where we don't want to get trapped because people are going to say that any use of military force is going to be World War III or it's going to mean 300,000 troops in Syria. It isn't. We're not talking about invading Syria to fix the whole crisis. But we are saying that there can be no use of chemical weapons. And if you use them, the cost is going to be far exceeded by any benefit. Does the president need to come to Congress to get authorization to do whatever that next military act is? I don't think so. Look, if he came to Congress, obviously I'd support it. Uh, I don't think he needs to. If you actually look at the War Powers Act, he has 60 days to act and then inform Congress about what he did. So I think on something that's limited like this, he has the authority to act, especially on an issue like enforcing the non-use of chemical weapons. I think Congress would be supportive, though, if he does come here. But this is what happened last time. President Obama said, I'm going to go to Congress when literally the fighter jets were on the runway ready to strike. He decided to come to Congress, said took 10 days to reconvene Congress because we were out. I was there then, made no effort to sell Congress on it. Trust me, I was one of the few Republicans coming out and saying we need to do this. And then by the time it came to where we were going to vote for this thing, it had fizzled because the administration didn't seem serious about it. So we cannot repeat that mistake again. I mean, basically what you're saying is that Congress can't be counted on to make the right decision, so the president right. should act unilaterally. No, Congress is not commander-in-chief. There's one person who's commander-in-chief, and that's the president. Our job is to give financial resources to execute these kinds of missions and to declare if a state of war exists according to the Constitution. It doesn't mean that any time any fighter jet takes off or any action is done or anything like that, that there have to be four 435, 535, including the Senate, commanders in chief. Our job is to support our armed forces with the task that the president, who was elected by the Americans, gave him. And I think in this case, he needs to act quickly and intensely and make it clear to the Russians and Syrians the use of chemical weapons has no place in this world, and we're going to defend that as we've defended it since World War I. Do you think that he should wait to see definitive proof that Assad used chemical weapons? I think, look, 
it, it, this is kind of an art form in terms of do you do it now? Do you wait to see? I think we have no doubt who's done it. We have no doubt who's done it in the past, and we have no doubt uh, who possesses chemical weapons. I think it is very clear when you have the Russians and their bots on Twitter trying to pump out that this is a false flag attack, like somehow the United States actually did this chemical weapons attack. Look, I have seen those things on Twitter. That means that the KGB, the FSB actually it is now, is in full panic mode and the Russians are scared because they know exactly who was behind this. It was Bashar al-Assad. Do you think that Bashar al-Assad is a threat to U.S. national security? Yeah, I, I think he's a war criminal. And so anytime we don't prosecute war criminals, it's a threat to national security. But secondly, Bashar al-Assad's actions and his brutality is leading to a whole generation of ISIS. Look, ISIS would never have been able to thrive had Bashar al-Assad not responded to a peaceful protest in Syria with brutality and killed 500,000 Syrians, including 50,000 children. He is an incubator for ISIS to exist because people are, are basically so angry that they're willing to, to, to join these terrorist movements. So yes, it is a threat to U.S. national security, to regional security, to our allies, including Israel. Okay, so after the, whatever military strike you are suggesting, um, let's say it's something akin to the Tomahawk attack a year ago on the airfield, then what? Well, it's kind of the same where we've been. I think any time we can drive to the negotiating table is good. This gets us in a better position to do that. But everybody basically is thinking, not everybody, you hear people say, okay, well, if we do this strike, then what? The reality is there may not be a then what, but the then what is basically saying we are destroying your capacity to fly your airplanes and deliver chemical weapons. We are inflicting harm upon you that is greater than any gain you'll get by the use of chemical weapons. And it sends a message to Assad and to any other evil person that wants to use them again that the cost is going to be exceeded. Congressman Adam Kinzinger, thank you.